since this morning we did have a lot of downpours and everything is basically underwater and look at this guy that is what happens when the males are fighting for rank this time he lost big time but that will cure and the typical Spanish Mastiff that you see is full of scars because what they do all the time they practice so when there's really something then they have enough of practice and know how to fight of course that is not something that a lot of people especially in the cities like their mascots to do but out here that is what this breed of dog is doing and you might remember there was a male cat black and white well tonight that cat went into the wrong place and is no more Juan found the cat this morning and it was in a place deep inside the compound where there is little room to escape and of course they hunted it down that is why the next occasion we have the material for that when we walk on that fence probably next week we will install some chicken wire so that any animal from that side cannot easily venture into the compound they should not we chased that cat away several times but that cat always wanted to come back and check out what's here and tonight that was a bad move It did rain again last night but now the forecast talks about some clouds and sun so tomorrow should be the first day full sun that is good for our solar system because we've been a little bit short on power and I want to check out what the sheep over there have been doing over the last few days so Come with me and let's uh, have a look. The puppies obviously need to stay here. Is that right, Oliver? Yeah, Oliver? Uh -huh. Don't go after the sheep. They have mostly been staying there in the back and probably overgrazed a little bit there, but that's the area where we want to see something. So that's not so bad at all and I did see them and there is a clip about this here in this area when the doggies were on the other side sleeping or did not want to venture out because of the rain. Right now because I am here the doggies are watching there and I just heard the meow of a cat. somewhere in that direction I don't see it yet but uh, probably will soon so here next to the lavender it does look a little bit lighter plants are missing so that's good light comes in and all the little things can now grow 
whatever they are, like this one here. Ah, there's the cat. So this one is the black one and you can see she is skinny. So she has given birth, but we have no idea where the little kitties are. The white and black male is no more because he finally did not understand that he should not go over there. And those boys and girls, they found him somewhere during night, somewhere in the compound, and he was not able to escape. Like I'm saying, nobody should go into this compound. Whether it's human, or cat, or fox, or whatever, these dogs are putting an end to this. And that is why we want to help her by installing here on the other side, when we do the fence. The posts are already there, you see them there, the three, and I mentioned that in an earlier video. Um, we will add some chicken wire there, so that these small animals from this side cannot go to over there. That should help, and also it should help the chicken once we introduce them um, to this place there again. But let's see. So here, definitely, they have been grazing. You see that the grass has been bitten off. So they go after these things that they know well. What I'm curious to see is what happens with this. So apparently they are not interested in that, like I mentioned, because it has little, yeah, little thorns, spikes, or whatever you want to call them. So this is probably not very pleasant. But to my surprise, right here, um, they did bite this off. So that's interesting. So apparently they also are good for getting rid of this plant or turn it into biomass for the soil. So that's very good. So that's a very helpful data point. Let's see what else I can find. Let's see if I see some bite marks here on that vetiver. And it appears that that isn't the case. So the vetiver has a different taste. It's exotic, they don't know it. They did chew on the grass, the grass from here, all over the place actually, right here. So that is interesting, so they leave the vetiver alone. Let's see how it looks like over there, because I saw them before I came here in this area. You can see the hoof prints here, and there is another bite mark. A little bit less afraid of my presence here. The other day they ran off to the other side. Now they don't. So let's move over here. And what I see that they did not chew on the vetiver. So that's good because we have it here so that we can cut it for mulch. And I would like this vetiver to continue growing and they also did not try this the horses would that's the thing or maybe now they wouldn't but earlier the horses would remove the mulch and that's something we don't like and someone was asking about flowers so the flowers that we have typically during spring which is basically now a second spring are those poppies then the yellow ones, and there are white ones, and the purple. I can't tell you the names of all this. Um, so we do have uh, probably 10 different types of flowers. Not all are present here, but most I think I see. And that is a very positive thing. So over there, not so much, but right here, we have a good collection of all the different flower types. And of course there will be more over time. 
So, let me turn around. There is Mrs. Cat. I can definitely see the belly is now back to normal. I wonder what she's looking for. Maybe for the other cat. But then, Daddy, the uh, Daddy cat, is not the black and white one, but the orange one. Yeah, the Mr. Cat from before. But with the animals, the guy comes and visit. But I would think she's looking for the black and white one. Who knows? We have no idea where she hid her litter. But when they are a little bit bigger, we will certainly be introduced. And by then we should have the chicken wire. So that nothing happens to them, at least not because of the dogs. And the reason for being here is to see what the sheep did do. So it looks pretty good. They are removing material all around here. And I should mention that one of the next things that we want to do after we are done with everything in the compound is to use our power harrow over there and here in the back and there under the tree and around it and plant some more seed, some sunhemp and friends just for biomass. And maybe the very same sheep will then also eat from that. We will see. But the purpose is to improve the soil and later on there should be some more trees. Depending on the time of year it's going to be polovnias or some native species. So if uh, we can't do this while it is still warm, so the cutoff date is basically beginning of August, then it's going to be native species in November. But we will see. I'm not in a rush. We will definitely order soon another shipment of 48 palovnias and see where we want to put them. My preference is to finish planting these trees inside of the compound for shade first and then this area here, the wannabe food forest, should then be the next topic. Well, there is some interesting interaction. Sheep are not afraid of the cat because the cat is a lot smaller and probably won't do anything to the sheep, unlike those big mastiff dogs. It's also interesting that they have been in there, in that trench. That is the trench that I want to fill with water when it is very dry. Right now there is no need. And what I see over there is also interesting. You see that stark contrast? There is the line with the vetiver and everything is green in front of it. But on the other side, that is where they have been grazing. So there. The color is different. They got to all the things in between and removed um, old material apparently. Because before I couldn't uh, walk there the way I could right now. And they did not touch that flower part there, including the vetiver. Quite interesting. So it was a good idea to bring them in here. So let's check this out a little bit further before I take you to the other side. So there has been some activity and they have removed material so that should help to grow some new things. And I'm looking for bite marks and 
on that plant we have them there is another one like before but nobody tried the vetiver this well this might be but doesn't really look like it were because all of the other vetiver is untouched so that's very interesting Now they opened this up. Now they got cold. Oh, interesting. Same with the dogs first, there's always one standing guard and then calling the others. And then the whole group runs there, the whole pack, to see what's what. So they are taking this guard dog thing pretty serious. So with all the rain, this definitely has filled up some more. It is not filled all the way to the overflow, that means that trench does not have standing water, you saw it on the other side, but this is filled and let's check out this part here, yeah, there's also more, but you see it's not like it used to be, because we planted the vetiva at the high water mark. But it is definitely in a not so bad shape. So I'm happy with that. Also here on the other side, which is B3, stuff has been growing. Last we grazed it down thinking, okay, now there will be the hot summer. And that was done by the horses and the sheep also. But you see, this has seen pretty good growth and now with the sun that is coming out from tomorrow on this should continue to grow quite well. So the combination of heat and rain is definitely a good thing or sunshine and rain. And even in that area here that was in bad shape I think I see some positive development and of course there are flowers now. The flowers were not there before. So somehow the flower seed detected now it's time to germinate. So it seems. So now I'm here on the other side of that trench. Oh, swale. This part here never fills. It lies a little bit higher unless there is a puddle and when there's enough rain then these places fill. This is made on purpose so the idea is that this water should find its way in that direction so that it goes to over there. This might not be perfect but it is definitely a little bit made with that in mind because we don't want to flow it over there but level would certainly be better. So if you are into this topic, excuse me. Um, this is learning and that was the very first attempt at Swales. And that tree did not make it. It is like this since a while. And that is why we want to plant some additional trees here. And like I said, yeah, there are palovnias or native species, fruit trees and all this. And this tree did die because of lack of water at some point. And um, we need to fix this because there is no point in planting a tree and then have no water if all this falls dry, which happens here. So we need to provide irrigation until the tree has basically made roots through all that and a little bit deeper so that then any water bubble somewhere in there can then be accessed by the tree. The sheep are getting curious. 
So I'm a little bit being followed. And they don't run away. So that's a good thing. I would also think that the sheep selected this area here in the back to sleep at night. Because it looks like that. There's some poop. Some sheep manure. And this area is also less green than it was before. So that's all good. Now let's have a look there at the Palovnias. But first let's check on something. I'm taking you along. So here inside of that cage um, there is some water and uh, there used to be some food. Last time there was, so probably tomorrow I should fill this up. And you can also see that there is a lot of um, litter around it. So this is where the cats are being fed. And apparently they also declared this their bathroom, so it seems. Juan is mostly doing that because he brought them and he feels responsible for them. This is an experiment. He would like us to have some cats for the rat and mice population. And so that they don't um, eat all the peaches and all the other things. Because that is what they have been doing. So now here, um, they have been here, which is clearly visible, but not that heavily. But you can again see that these have been bitten off. So they have been grazing here in this area. And those Palovnia trees, um, they have the leaves close to the ground. And therefore there is this net here. So that they won't be affected. And the bigger ones there, they could use some pruning down below, or at least um, it would not matter. Again, different regime. These are not for wood. This is for shade and biomass. So I'm definitely being followed around. See, this sheep um, somehow wants to be close and figure out what I'm up to. While the other two, they stay a little bit back there. But they're all watching. It's quite interesting. Yeah, so, like I said, the idea is that these grow as they want, doesn't matter. The leaves will fall to the ground and therefore feed the soil. And at some point we can cut branches if we want to, but it doesn't also not matter. They are for shade and biomass and not for wood. So if there are multiple trunks or not, and if the trunk is very clean or not, it doesn't really matter. Because this is the different management scheme. And it's quite interesting, the jungle that I'm walking through here. So let me step back a little bit and show you that again. So this really has <laughs> some jungle feeling to it. And the soil here is a lot better than it used to be. That was the sand and stone stuff. And now it is full of organic material. So I am extremely happy with the result what has happened here in this area. But then more trees. So at the moment these. And later more of the fruity type and maybe some nuts and all this. Wannabe food forest at some point should be a food forest without the wannabe. We will see. And the leak here is really bothering me. But I think I found a solution. There are some pressure reduction valves. Question is where to buy them. I found them on Amazon, so I probably just um, order a few. And then we try this. I have not yet understood how they work, but I will look it up. And then maybe we use the main pipe as full pressure and in certain places we then reduce. 
So like coming in here into the compound, we reduce. And then these uh, couplings, those fittings, will not create as many problems there. <laughs> This was about who can be up here and who can't. So Oliver got chased away. Right, he wasn't happy as you could see. As long as it's on that level, that's just normal communication. But if the other one doesn't back down, then there is a fight. They're all here. This is this pack thing. They follow me around wherever I go here in the compound. And when I sit down somewhere, they will then also sit down or lay down around me. So as you can see, those are little puppies. They're not really bad dogs. They just do what dogs do. But then I understand, not everybody tastes. But I'm feeling very happy amongst them because uh, they do what I like them to do. So they obey a little bit what I say most of the time. But then I understand those are little wolves. And when the instincts kick in, then there is not much that I can do. Then these teeth, they come into action. What I also can mention and show you, that sunflower there, this one here, is a lot bigger than the sunflowers we had here last time. So I would think that the prior um, plants that were here, they helped to build up nutrients in the soil and now this sunflower is taking advantage of it. Well, now it is a lot moister and therefore it grew better. But it's definitely bigger. So if you compare these two, before they were like the one to the right. And now we have this giant one. And what is also growing very impressively is that Bermuda grass here. So this is also very nice. So if we had a paddock full of that, it would be just perfect. But one thing at a time. And as we are stopping the ranching and the cattle stuff and doing trees instead, this will follow at some point, but not as a prime objective at the moment. So the idea is we have a very dense forest and then step by step with the help of animals we make it lighter and everywhere where then the sun comes in this should then emerge and of course we help it by bringing out seed of this very species it's a native from here but um, we need to help it a little bit and you see here it is conquering the area a little bit and i need to be watchful so that we get some okra here because that was the idea and at some point, I might then say stop at this point here. So I mentioned this. Um, some of you said this can be invasive and yeah, that's uh, certainly the case. But in our case, I'm very happy with everything that is invasive, at least at the moment.
They always clean each other's ear. That is one of their favorite things to do. Someone wants to play. Let me show you this little detail here. It's already getting a little bit dark and it helps to give you the impression. So there is the Polovnia tree and it got planted maybe two or three weeks after all the other things around got seeded. And you see the corn, you see the sun hemp and you see the sunflowers. I did cut a little bit around the tree but you can already see that this basically now sits in a little hole and it could get dark the sun comes up very high here so it will probably receive enough light but you can definitely see that this could be an issue and it might be that i need to cut the circle a little bit wider so thinking about the commercial plantation of palovnias that we want to do this is something to take into consideration so i'm leaning towards the thought that first we plant all that then we cut it a few times and after it has been cut we plant then the trees and this gets reseeded every time so the sequence would be now that this is tall now imagine a meter fifty we throw the seed on top of it, uh, overhead, and then cut it down, set the trees, and over the next three months, the tree then probably can grow a little bit faster than this. But we need to set the tree immediately after we cut this, so that it has a little bit of time uh, ahead start. And, and this is this other thought, I think that's important, to spare 1.5 square meters around it, and put some cardboard down so that immediately around the tree nothing will germinate and grow and if you do this for 400 trees per hectare which is what we want to do then of course you cannot do what i'm doing here that i come here and watch and every day cut a little bit if needed so with 400 trees um, yeah that's a little bit impractical so my idea was to reserve the space via cardboard cardboard mulch to prevent um, the seeds from germinating and all around it can continue. So that's the idea. <laughs> 